Hey, what's good? I'm Mitch, a portrait and lifestyle photographer. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create custom presets and LUTs to create a signature look. But before we get into that, let me show you what gear I use to capture these photos and videos. Starting off with my camera, the Canon R6 Mark II, my favorite. Hands down, an absolute workhorse. It crushes photo, crushes video. Can't complain, honestly can't complain. Now for my lenses, I've got the Canon 16 to 35 f 2.8, perfect for wide shots, really exaggerating my landscapes and in video really adds that cool sense of scale, especially for establishing shots in the video. Then I've also got a 24 to 70 f 2.8. Right, now that you know what I'm using, let me show you how I edit these shots. Like we said, we want this to be dark and moody. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this temperature, maybe 3600. Next, I'm dropping this contrast. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up my shadows to around 50, and then I'm gonna bring up the blacks to about 35. And the reason I'm doing this is because I bring in a lot of my contrast back in the tone curves. So next up, I'm gonna add some texture, around 12 should be fine. And the clarity, I'm gonna bring up to about five just to add a little touch of sharpness. And then we're gonna get into the tone curves. I actually don't know what to call this, but the, the first curve, right? And we're just gonna bring up the highlights a little bit and we're gonna make another point in the middle to slightly bring up the mid-tones a little bit more than the highlights. Now we're gonna go into the shadows and drop those till they're just above the middle line and then down into the blacks and that I'm gonna crush somewhere around there. Next, I'm going into the red curve and then we're just gonna bring that all the way up there. I think I'm gonna make a midpoint to drop some of the, some of the magenta then we're going to go into the magenta curve and I'm going to bring that all the way up to around there. But I want to drop some of the magentas out of the mid-tone because I don't want it to be too heavy there. Something like that's good, I reckon. And then I'm going to drop the shadows slightly as well. Just a touch. I'm going to add some slight greens into the highlights and the mid-tones. And then I'm going to bring in some more magenta into the shadows. And that's already starting to look quite moody. Yeah happy with that. Now we're gonna add just a touch of blue into the highlights, just the tiniest little bit, and a little bit more into the mid-tones, and then we're gonna come in with the shadows and add a lot more blue into the shadows. And you can see just from the before and after, we're already looking a lot more darker and a lot more moodier than when we started off. Next thing we're gonna do is bring in some saturation, and I'm gonna drop the vibrance as well. So I want my reds to be slightly slightly on the warmer side but i still want them to feel punchy and and cherry red in a way right but i don't want it to be too much i know let me let me lock in on this and then i'll get back to you all right so a quick breakdown of what that was in the saturation i tried to bring up some of the red and orange saturation because i want those colors to be the main focus of the image and i want them to contrast with the blue and and I want them to contrast with the blue and teal in the shadows, which we will bring in in the color grading section. But just for now, we're just working on the reds, right? I'm also desaturating colors like the greens here because I don't want them to be a focus at all. And I'm slightly desaturating the blues because I'm gonna bring them back in the color wheels. Same thing with the luminance. Now, the reason I desaturate the luminance in my red is because I found that it helps me retain some detail in the very red areas of the photo. For example, I tend to use a lot of red lighting in my portraits and I've specifically found that it helps me maintain contrast between the facial features when I bring down the luminance on the reds. As for, and of course for the hue, trying to make the reds feel a bit more cherry red than orangey red and leaning the greens a bit more towards the teals and the blues, leaning the blues a bit more to that greenish teal color because I want to make that red and teal contrast and yeah that's that's about it all right now we're getting to the color wheels and that is where I mainly create my color contrast all right so for my shadows I usually go somewhere around the 150 range so like 153 looks pretty good and then I usually go around the 20 to 25 range I'd say 21 looks pretty good here then into the mid tones I really want to look for I think I want to push this a bit more blue, to be honest. And then we're just going to drop that down till we find a, a nice medium, like 13 looks pretty good there. And then for my highlights, I want to go somewhere around the 130 to 140. I think 130 looks good. And then we're going to go around 17 saturation. And then just by turning them on and off right here, you can see how much that's done to create that 
red green color contrast so i'm going to run through these pretty quickly because i do the same thing for all of my sharpening and all my photos it's always 100 on the sharpening amount 45 on the detail and then 50 on the masking and i always tick these two so remove chromatic aberrations because i don't want them in my image and then enable profile corrections because when i shoot on a wide lens it can create warping and distortion so that just removes that and it fixes that up for me sometimes i add grain but in a case like this there's already a fair amount of noise in general so i don't know if i want to add too much grain maybe push 20 but i don't want to overdo it because there's already a bunch of noise in the image all right now for the finishing touches the calibration i'm gonna add a bit more shadow tint and then what i usually do for my reds is i go around 20 i think we'll go 25 for this one today and then for the saturation i usually always keep that at 20. my green hue sometimes i push it to around 20 as well but for this one i don't think i want to but I do think that I will bring in some saturation. And then I usually go the opposite way with the blue hues. Negative five to negative 15 is usually where I have it, but I think we'll go like negative six looks good here. And then we'll go 10 saturation for the blue hue and see if we turn it on or off. Look at the result that we get. All right, I'm happy with the edit. So let's save it as a preset. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna go up to this plus button on the presets. You're going to go create presets and we're just going to call this night mood and I'm going to tick all these boxes because these are the settings that I want Lightroom to save for the next time that I for the next time that I use this preset and then I'm going to hit create and if I scroll down there it is right preset saved. All right, so now that we're done with the photo, let's color grade this video. So here's the thing. I want to match the color grade of this video. And with Canon's color science, matching these two shots will be pretty easy beforehand to make sure that I can get them as close together as possible. So to start off with the lighting, I use the same sort of lighting setup, had my key light set to red coming in from the opposite side that I was shooting from. And I made sure to shoot in a location that had practical lighting in the background, as you can see from like this street lamp. And I think these building lights here, similar with the photo, we had buildings and street lamps and just other lights in the background right and the second thing we're shooting in log in this case c log 3 because it gives us the most dynamic range and information in the image and with canon's color science matching these two shots will be pretty easy so let's get started okay so first things first i'm going to add an adjustment layer over my clip and this is where i'm going to place the conversion LUT first of all now if you don't know a conversion LUT is just a LUT that converts your footage from whatever log profile you had it in to the rec 709 so i'm going to go down to the creative section and I'm gonna throw in my conversion light. And then immediately you can see that the footage just goes from that gray flat log profile to regular colors. I mean, that's what you'd expect to see. Gonna drag another adjustment layer on and this one is going to be called base look. Now this adjustment layer is where I'm gonna be building out the look that I want for the shot. So I'm gonna start off in the basic correction and I'm gonna drop the temperature because I'm trying to match the other photo, right? So going for a colder look, some, some green in the image. I'm gonna bring up the highlights a bit, check my scopes. So I wanna keep the highlights around the 80 range. I'm gonna bring up my shadows a bit as well because I'm gonna bring in, like we did with the photo, I'm gonna bring in contrast within the curves. Leave that there for now. Might throw in a little increase into the whites, but not too much. Yeah. Down to the curves. First things first, I'm going to raise up the highlights a little bit. Bring up the mids slightly. I'm going to drop the shadows a touch just about there. That looks about good. Going to go to the red curve and bump up that red curve. And then drop the shadows into teal. And you can already see we're starting to get some of that red and green split contrast, that split toning look. Same thing with the greens, gonna raise them ever so slightly, because I just want a little bit there. And then I'm gonna drop them in the shadows a bit. And over in the blues, gonna bring a bit more blue into the highlights, add some into the midtones, but not too much. And then maybe like a little bit into the shadows. Next, I'm going down into the sliders. And I'm gonna raise up that red saturation just a touch. Might raise some of the yellows in a second, just to see what it does. Okay, it's not, it's not bad. I'll leave that there, drop some of the greens, and then I'll bring up, there's not really many actual blues in the image because we've kind of just added that blue tone into the top, but I'll bump up the blue saturation a little bit anyways. I'll go down to the hue, and I'm just gonna play around with the reds, see what, just a little drop makes it a little bit more red instead of that, that cherry red like we had last time. And yeah, I'm just gonna make really small adjustments and see how it affects the image. So in this case, I'm gonna, just gonna bring up the green slightly, 
player. I'm with the Blues. Keep uh, keep them as like keep them as is, pretty much. Just leave them there. And then for ooh, did not mean to do that. And then for wow. And then for the luminance, I'll just drop the red luminance a touch. But we might come back to that and bring that back up later. Definitely bring down the yellows just a little bit too. All right. Let's move on to the color wheels. Now here's where I really want to push in that color separation look. So we're going to go down into the shadows and just start dropping that. And you can immediately see the effect that it has. If we turn that off and on, you can immediately see how it's affected the shadows and brought that teal green into them. I'm going to do the same with the mid-tones and then with the highlights and make them slightly more blue, I want to say, but still leaning into that look. Then I'm going to raise up the shadows just a touch. See what raising the mids does. Kind of like it up a little bit. Keep the highlights as is. And if we turn that on and off, massive difference, right? Massive difference. However, now it's a bit too green. And I could go around and fix them in that adjustment layer, but I'm going to add on a third adjustment layer. And I'm going to go straight back into the color wheels. And this time, instead of taking them down towards like the teal, I'm going to take them across towards the blues. And we see how we make that teal green a lot more blue than it was before. So if I turn that off and then back on, then we're going to go into our curves real quick, make some points there. I'm just going to drop that ever so slightly so that we don't have that blue color cast. If I turn that off and then bring it back on, you see the difference it makes like around here and then around there gets rid of that that casting that shadow all right then I'm gonna go back into the base look and probably bump up the red saturation a little bit more instead of affecting the entire image and there we go All right, so we finished color grading the video and now we want to save it as a LUT. Now for this specific clip, I did grade on the adjustment clips, but to save it as a LUT, I need to move those edits onto the actual clip. So what I've done is I've duplicated the clip and you can do that by holding Alt or Option and then just dragging and dropping. And then what I've done is right clicked on all three of the adjustment clips and I've hit copy. And then you go to the clip that you duplicated and you hit paste attributes. And then you will be left with the look right there and then you'll be left with the color graded clip. And then you'll have a color graded clip, right? What I haven't added is I haven't added this top layer because that is an extra adjustment that I do. So I just wanna use the Rec 709 conversion and the base look as my LUT. Then you wanna go up here and right click on Lumetri Color and export as a .cube file. And you can save it wherever you wanna save it. Obviously give it a name. I'm going to call this Blue Green Nights and hit save. All right, so just to end off, I've written down a few tips to make this whole process easier for you. So starting off with, remember to always shoot in raw and in log, because that will give you the most dynamic range and the best quality in your work. Number two, focus on good lighting. Nothing can save a badly lit shot. If your lighting is good, your editing and color grading will be so much easier. Finally, go experiment. Have fun because the best way to learn how to do this thing is to try it out yourself and see what results you get. Anyways, I hope you have a great time and get creating.